Hello there, orchestra friends. Mr. D here, and I wanted to wish you may the fourth be with you. For those of you that have watched Star Wars, you will like this video. You will not dislike this video. You will forward this video to your friends. You will do all of your homework. You will ask your friends to do all of their homework. You will ask random people if they have done their homework. You will subscribe to my channel. All right, so a piece of advice. Do not pick up a call on Skype or Zoom from Darth Vader. He's been doing that social distancing thing. If you watch the movies, you know what I'm talking about. Anyway, today I wanted to talk to you a little bit about the great composer Franz Joseph Haydn. He was truly one of the uh, best composers of the classical era. He was so influential. Um, he was prominent and prolific. That means that he wrote lots of compositions and he developed chamber music, particularly the string quartet and the piano trio. So string quartet is much like orchestra, except it has uh, fewer people. It has only four people. That's why it's called quartet. And it has two violins, a viola and a cello. And the piano trio has a piano, a violin and a cello. So he developed those genres uh, very much. Before uh, Haydn, the piano trio um, was such that the string instruments were more or less accompanied the piano part, but he really brought it to new heights and that, that is amazing. He was, for that, he was called the father of the symphony because he further developed that genre and the father of the string quartet. He was a lifelong um, resident of Austria. Austria is in Europe and it's close to Germany. Vienna is the city in Austria where many, many prominent uh, composers lived and worked. And that's why sometimes the three Viennese classics are called Haydn, Mozart and Beethoven and they're called Viennese because they all lived and worked in Vienna. So he uh, spent much of his career as a court musician to the wealthy Esterhazy family and they had several estates and some of them were very remote. So that kind of isolated him from other cons uh, composers and trends in music until later uh, we will learn why um, and he as he put it he was a force to be original and at the time of his uh, death aged 77 he was one of the most celebrated uh, composers in Europe. Um, Haydn uh, had siblings that were also composers uh, he was the brother of Michael Haydn, uh, also a good composer, uh, Johann Evangelist Haydn, a tenor, and more, most of all, he was a friend of Mozart, and he was teacher of Ludwig van Beethoven. How about his early life? Haydn was born in Rorau, Austria, a village that was uh, at the time on the border between Austria and Hungary. His father was uh, a wagon repairman. Uh, he made wheels. And um, his mother uh, previously worked as a cook. Neither parent could uh, read music. However, the father taught himself to play the harp. And his family was extremely musical. They would often sit together um, and sing and uh, the father will play the harp with their neighbors, etc. So Haydn's par parents noticed that he was musically gifted and knew that in his village there was no way that he could obtain serious musical training. So one of their re relatives, uh, Frank, was a schoolmaster and choir 
master at uh, Heidelberg. And so Haydn was to be apprenticed um, to Frank in his home. Well, that was not easy for him. He was often hungry and uh, humiliated by the filthy state of his clothing. So they didn't, they didn't feed him, they didn't give him good clothes. So he began his musical training there and he could play both harpsichord and violin. Uh, so he also would sing treble parts in the church uh, choir. So uh, Haydn singing impressed uh, so th those that heard him and brought it to, to the attention of Georg van Reuter, the director of music in St. Stephen's Cathedral in uh, Vienna, who was coming to visit Heinberg and was looking for new choir boys. So he auditioned successfully and he was accepted. So he lived in, a, uh, in the Capel house next to the cathedral along with Reuter, Reuter's family and other four choir boys. Um, and after uh, 1745, his brother Michael came as well. But uh, like Frank before, Reuter didn't always uh, care to make sure that uh, Haydn was properly uh, always properly well fed and and dressed so he was uh, hoping often to get invitation to perform at aristocratic audiences where the uh, singers were served refreshments so at some point you should know that he matured physically to the point that he wasn't able to sing a high choral part uh, the same reason why i can't sing high choral parts. Anyway, Empress Maria Theresa, Theresa uh, complained to Reuter about his singing and called it a crowing, uh, like a rooster. One day, he carried out a prank. And back then, the boys wore his ha their hair and pigtails. So he uh, snipped off the pigtail of one of his fellow choristers. So that was enough for Reuter and he was canned and he was kicked out in the street. So then he began to pursue his career as freelance musician. So as a chorister, he did not receive a lot of training in musical um, theory and uh, composition. And so, but he studied um, uh, in, in books and he studied uh, the work of Carl Philipp Emanuel Bach, as you know, this is one of Bach's sons. And so he started to um, compose a little bit more and more and more. With the increase in uh, reputation, he eventually obtained aristocratic patronage. Uh, aristocratic patronage, aristocrats are the royalty and a patron, being patron, this means that they uh, invite a composer or a musician to work for them and they give them a salary or a pension, etc. So uh, Count Morzin became his first full-time uh, employer. And after that, the most important person he worked for was the Esterhazy, the Count Esterhazy. Now, Esther Hazy was extremely rich. Like nowadays, you could imagine Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos, uh, that kind of rich. He had his own opera house, had his own orchestra, musicians, and all that. Um, so, uh, as an employee of Esther Hazy, Haydn had a huge range of responsibilities, Compos composition, running the orchestra, playing chamber music, uh, etc. But uh, this was a superb opportunity uh, for Haydn, and he spent th nearly 30 years to, uh, to work at the Esterhazy Court. And his mu musical style continued to uh, develop. In 1779, uh, his contract was 
renegotiated and he wasn't uh, obligated to write music just for the Esther Hazy family, but he was also allowed to uh, uh, take uh, write for other people and sell his 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 music. And now some of the um, uh, the uh, houses or mansions or whatever they are uh, of Esther Hazy were very far and very remote from from Vienna. And um, one is the interesting thing that um, what happened is that he uh, wrote his farewell symphony uh, to give Esther Hazy a hint because the families of the musicians were usually not invited at the residence. And so as any uh, good uh, father or mother they would miss their families and they wanted to go back but uh, in order to get the hint um, Haydn wrote the farewell symphony in which at the end the musicians will stand up uh, little by little a few by a uh, couple at a time and they will leave the room and so the orchestra will start diminishing in size and then late uh, it will be just like a string orchestra uh, then some of the strings will start leaving then there will be like six people there will be like just four people at the end and then uh, it finishes with two people everybody who uh, left took their music blew their candle as you know they didn't have uh, lights uh, you know electrical lights back then so anyway it was um really interesting way of him he couldn't just go to the uh, the count and say hey, hey we want to go home he had to come up with a uh, innovative way so he doesn't offend him but also to convey the message so he was smart that way and he was uh, also known for his uh, uh, great sense of humor in any way in 1790 prince nicolaus uh, died and he was uh, succeeded by his son Anton and he did not have the love for music that his father had so therefore he dismissed um, Haydn so he still had some uh, responsibilities to write some music here or there but more or less he was free to um, to do stuff that he wanted and so he got together with an impresario and he uh, traveled to England where he uh, was received with superior uh, joy and while traveling to London he met the young Beethoven and when he was in uh, his city of Bonn Beethoven came to Vienna and, uh, and uh, up to the second Haydn's visit to London, um, he was Haydn's pupil. So then uh, Haydn uh, returned to Vienna in 1795. Prince Anton died and his successor, Nicolaus II, wanted to bring out the music. Uh, however, now Haydn was able to uh, get better uh, contract terms, and so he had more freedom. So, the later years of uh, or this successful uh, period, uh, he became one of the most uh, known composers uh, in, in Vienna. He really made name for himself and people like Beethoven and Salieri uh, brought him to the hall for the performance of his um, um, the creation and so uh, everybody uh, cherished and, and enjoyed the composition anyway uh, so Haydn died at age 77 and uh, his last words were attempts to uh, calm and reassure his servants uh, as the French army under Napoleon launched an attack on Vienna. So 
then in um, June 1809, uh, memorial service was performed at which Mozart's Requiem was uh, performed. So Haydn um, had a robust, a robust sense of humor and evident in the love of his practical jokes and very apparent in his music. He had many friends. Um, so he was a devout Catholic and uh, he would turn uh, to prayer when he had trouble composing. In regards of his business dealings, he um, was really uh, self-interested to maximize his income and profit. And so he was trying to be a good businessman. In other words, he was trying to get paid fairly for what uh, he would do. In, in other uh, terms, he was very generous uh, man and he did a lot of charitable concerts. Haydn was uh, short and perhaps as a result of being underfed throughout his youth. He had smallpox and that left his face pitted with scars. Uh, his nose was very large and disfigured by polyps and sometimes they would prevent him to, um, to write music. So Haydn uh, developed uh, very specific characteristics of his music, very short, simple musical motifs that, um, that were very concentrated and the musical events would happen rather quickly. He was central to the development of the so-called sonata form, which is used in symphonies and concertos. And um, as an inventiveness, uh, he tried to uh, uh, introduce the fugue into the classical style and to, the, and to enrich the rondo. So that is pretty much what um, I would like, like to talk to you about um, Haydn. It is um, fun to have uh, this. Um, lesson and to talk to you about this great composer and when I include his the musical examples I know that you will enjoy them because he's so great I mean uh, his music is just like sparkle anyway nice talking to you have fun <laughs>